I just want to thank everyone who have taken time out of their days, their work days to come. I want to thank all the speakers for the hard work and effort they've put into their presentations and taking time out of their days. I also want to thank Barclays and Rise for sponsoring the event, providing all the food and drink. My business was actually set up last year, having spent the last 10 years exploring my own psyche and trying to design a framework for happiness. For employees, financial well-being or conversely, financial distress doesn't separate between your personal and work life. We're here as a collection of thought leaders within the space to come up with the best practices to go about implementing a financial well-being solution that works for both employees and employers on an aggregate basis. The more of that mental resource that you put towards addressing those financial concerns, the more at risk you are, the more accident prone you are at work. For me, bringing the living wage to Finwell was um, an obvious thing to do. You've got responsible employers who want to attract as to what they can do and what they should do. So ideal opportunity and ideal audience. 17% of the workforce in London and the South East are paid less than the living wage. Huge numbers. I think the reason this is so important is that the decisions people make are very, very heavily influenced by the context and by the interfaces they actually uh, encounter. There are extraordinary problems you can solve that we're never given to solve simply because the people who have those problems don't have a media budget and don't think it's worth talking about. Nine times out of ten, it's not the programmes that they put into place that do the harm, it's the things that they actually don't do. We think that financial well-being is incredibly important. Um, the outcomes for employers and the outcomes for employees are amazing, but we're fascinated about how we get people to engage and drive capability with finance. And these are the types of things that our vulnerable brains need to be primed by. We need to have these kind of simple, very, very intuitive ways of helping us make good or bad decisions. Every time we do a transaction, we buy something, we can feel that pain of parting with our money in our brain. Everybody knows what good financial behaviour is. It's whether or not they want to do it. When we're thinking about financial health or any form of well-being or health at all, we can't just look at the individual and the people. We have to look at the environment in which they are functioning. In AIR, we just took a different view. We said, no, I think we believe all people are good, so let's start at 100. And where this person is starting to make false or be a little suspicious, we'll bring them down. But guess what? Most people are going to carry through. Going to the user and just saying, I'm not going to try to push a product on you that's an improvement on a product that already exists. I'm going to let you guide the, the solution that I'm going to put in front of you. Every single interaction is with a screen and a person. And, and the screen and the person have an emotional connection with each other as well. 